welcome. This is a tutorial of how to set up a barcode scanner for use with the Dimmel emulator. The one I've used to program is the one on screen. Uh, anything in this video relating to the barcode, I will be using this machine and the user manual that came with it. So if you decide to purchase it, purchase this one or one with an equivalent manual for this video to be a applicable. So the first step is obviously buying one of these barcode scanners. Make sure it has a little booklet full of uh, set up barcodes. Otherwise, you know, this won't be useful. After you get it, it should come with the manual, the barcode scanner itself, and a cord that connects to USB or your connection type of preference. Once you have that, you'll need to plug it in, let it set up. Then to get it set up for the emulator, open up your booklet. You've got to turn to page two of the booklet. This tells you the angle that the barcode scanner needs to be set up at in order for it to most effectively read. This is important if you're wanting to turn it into a scanner. You need to keep it at least six inches away or 15 centimeters uh, for it to accurately scan the card, which is a little larger than the actual unit scanner. But we, we gotta make do with what we have. Second is on page five. You get the function settings. The two on this page that we're looking at is the good read beep sound. That just means whenever it reads something, it gives a sound indicator. If you don't want that, it's optional. You can turn it off. Um, the reading mode, continuous scan. If you're setting it up for a unit or a board of some sort, that just means it'll stay on. No matter what, if the trigger is pulled or anything, it won't affect it at all. This right here is the prefix. This is what allows it to function properly. The prefix adds a character or multiple characters as inputs of a keyboard before it reads what's on the barcode. So in the example it gives, it has the M and the G before the code. We're going to be using this to set it up for the barcode scanner. So you would scan the add prefix button, or not button, it's a code. And then you'd want to go over to the page 19, and it's dollar sign 80 for F1 that will pull up the barcode enter prompt in the emulator and it will input and press enter on it automatically for whatever code you scan. So if you scan one of your Moji King or Dinosaur King cards, it will input the Sega code on the card. I will be going through this. as a demonstration. Opening up the emulator. I've got my card for my scanner. I'm going to keep the beeping on and just go to the add prefix because that's the most important part of this. That beep, and scanned it. I'm going to go over to the input section. I'm going to scan the F1. Now since I've done that, 
it should be able to effectively scan cards. I just pulled up a window to test it out, but it would press F1 and open up a new... a new window of my browser. Here's your car. Which mode do you want to play today? Also, I, I apologize for the odd like sound of the card. emulator since I have other things running. So right, I'm going to scan the card. Dinosaur card. Press the button. Triceratops will come and fight for you. Next, it sounds somewhat demonic. From the sound of the emulator lagging, but I did scan it in. I scanned a Tyrannosaurus card. Well, I don't have any cards, so I printed out the barcode, but it works effectively the same. It's the same code. You noticed it didn't bring up a menu. That's because it's not... It's doing it all so fast that you don't need to see the menu. It just does the code behind. As you can see, no code inputs, just scanning, activates the card, and that is how to effectively do it. Just remember, bottom angle, like showed in the manual, and at least 6 inches or 15 centimeters apart for it to scan.